Let's see if there's anybody there. Yeah. Got one truck there. Well, I can get straight out, that's all right. Good morning and welcome back for another video with myself, Darren. And this is a day in life of a class one driver here in the UK. And I'm currently stopping in Durham services and half past five in the morning. It's very quiet. Yeah, not bad. And as you can see at this place, you need a key to get access to the shower, which is normally better because the normal looks after a little bit better as well. That feels a little bit better at least. But why not? It's been a while since I've had one. Little Mackie's breakfast for the road. Let's give the unit a trailer quick once over. Make sure there's no damage, no flat tires. Go be checking the tread as well in a minute with the flashlight. Inside the curtains are not damaged. All seems in good condition. Good. For our first job down in Middlesbrough, it is about a 40 minute drive with traffic included and 24 miles. First job done, no problems, and that's one way to tell you're in a nice area, isn't it? I mean, what's happened to all these cars? I better get out of here and on to my next job then. I'm coming up from Middlesbrough all the way down the A1 onto the M1, 62, then 61 up to Leyland. 137 miles in total, due to get there, just under three hours. But before I do leave, because I was out last night, I need to get myself some dinner. And since my delivery point was literally here on this road, parts up there out the way nice and easy, secured. I've got little here, so I might as well grab some like meal deal or something quickly. Time is now quarter to nine, and I'm driving down A19 at the moment. ETA to get to Leyland is going to be 11 a.m. Might beat it a little bit. Um, because we've got a sat-nav set to 52 and I can drive 56 but with traffic included I'm probably going to stay around 11 o'clock as well we've got to keep it at that time it's a total of 110 miles still to go there's not a lot of action on this road really it's quite a long windy road with not a lot of different scenery the scenery down here is pretty much the same it's just like trees, farms, trees farms and then etc all the way down until we get onto the M1 and then I'll jump on the M1 to the M62 get a little bit of different scenery around there around Bradford and Halifax etc some quite nice views hopefully traffic by the time we get to Leeds shouldn't be a problem same for Bradford area as well and then down to 61 yeah it's just standard motorway really isn't it 61 a bit fun down there so I am collecting I think it's 15 pallets from this place in Leyland and then delivering it directly to their client to their customer um, can't remember where it is off the top of my head I don't think it's too far away I think it's somewhere quite local so it's not a long drive today well after the first half anyway second half of the day won't be a long drive I started this morning at 6 o'clock, so I need to make sure I take a 15 minute before 12. Which I probably will be anyway, because the driving hours, I'll have, um, how long have I left? I've got 3 hours and 17 minutes on the tackle at the moment. And I've got 2 hours drive, so I'll have about an hour and 15 or so after I get to the first delivery, well, collection. I've got about an hour and 15 there for driving time. So the map is might be able to take a break before I do the delivery part of it. I'll just weigh it up as I go. Still got an hour to go and I'm right up upon the top of the moors at the moment. 
highest point of the motorway in the UK on the M62. So just by the Saddleworth Moors Junction right now, on Junction 22. We've got one hour to go. And as you can see, the rain's trying its hardest to come out. And the wind is definitely there. When you've got an empty trailer, and you've got a pretty strong wind on top of the moors, you can feel it, definitely feel it. Luckily it's not as bad as what it have been in the past. And it's 42 miles left as well, the distance wise. I keep telling myself, in the summertime when it's really nice, I want to try and come off at this junction and then park up somewhere for the night and have like a nice view of the moors. Just wake up in the morning when the sun's coming up early in the summertime. I think that'd be a fantastic way to start your day. Looks like we closed the motorway on the other side, doing a little bit of a pothole repair. <laughs> I mean, it's a better time and place really for doing a pothole repair, isn't there? Instead of at half past ten on a Thursday morning. And yeah, you guessed it right, on the other side of the motorway, <laughs> they've closed it. Oh my word. I mean, it's probably going to take like 15 minutes really, isn't it, to fix the pothole. So it's pretty cool the way they do it these days, isn't it? They have like a 25 kilogram bag of tarmac. You slice the bag like you do with concrete, stick it into the hole and then tamper it down with the machine. But on the other hand, I don't think these drivers on the right hand side are going to be appreciating 15 minutes sat around. I have seen it a few times being done though, where they close like a little bit of a road just to do one little section and it probably takes like 10 to 15 minutes to do. You yeah, are pretty quick at it. <laughs> I mean, it's probably been closed for five minutes, the road looking at it. And look how much it's backed up already. Towards the end of it now, so it's probably what, about three or four miles already backed up. And then it's just going to be backing out a lot quicker in the next 10 minutes. That's all the motorway journey done for now. Let's keep over to the left hand side. I've just come off the M65 motorway. The traffic's been alright overall, to be honest. Not been too bad. We've got three miles to the destination where I need to be for the collection. And you'll be there in about 10 minutes time. Just seen a Volsa station then as well. Quite a few trucks in there. Three or four of them. <laughs> I say to people, make sure your load is all secured. There's no defects on your vehicle or your truck. Because if you're driving past the Volsa station, they see something that looks like it's not strapped up right or anything. God, they'll have you. They will have you straight away. So always double check, make sure everything's all right. Especially when you're curt inside as well. You always think to yourself, I, I mean, I'm guilty of this, but like when I was doing class two and stuff when I was younger, thinking, oh, you don't need straps and everything. It'll be all right, you never get pulled over. Well, it's not worth it. It's not worth risking it. You always think, ah, oh, they're on small boxes with good shrink wrap around them. They're not gonna move. You give it like a little push to make sure it's sturdy. Well, I suppose 10 years ago, you probably used to be able to get away with a bit more stuff. <laughs> As some of the older boys might know, with the analog tackles. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff people got away with then. You just keep these little paper discs, but monitored your hours. You had to keep a big stack of them for 28 days, and you had to have 28 days of empty ones that are, or blanks, shall I say. You had to keep all your blanks with you as well, as your full ones. 
you just get a lot of drivers like taking them out at the end of the day and just throwing them away and if they got pulled over to be like oh I was off on that day that didn't work <laughs> you know what I'm talking about if you was around then Right, I've arrived. Five past eleven. It wasn't too bad actually. I did say about eleven o'clock when I first left Middlesbrough. Um, so that's goods indoor. Is that the same goods out? It's a lot of places. They just say like goods in or just goods out or whatever. What to deal with both? What do I do? We'll park it up in the middle section. I'll just reverse it back. I presume it would be the same door anyway for uh, loading as well. Might as well get the kettle on anyway whilst they're loading there. 15 pallets. A little bit of a uh, span has been thrown into the works at the moment. So I'm currently in Leyland to collect 15 pallets and one of the ladies at the office just came out now saying that their client in Shipley we're delivering it directly to they don't have a forklift truck driver in the afternoon for today and yeah we don't use tail lifts or pump trucks it's all side curtain or loading bays so she's been on the phone to one of our people in the transport department to try and sort something out if there's anything we can do to either take it now take it back to our yard and then get it loaded to a different truck in the morning and then plan it for first thing in the morning delivery or am i going to basically leave it not collect it and then maybe do a load and go tomorrow who knows so i'm just waiting for the office to get back to me to see what we're going to be doing for the rest of the day some of the older trailers that don't have your usual guides up at the top for your inner straps but instead they have one in the middle like so where there's two bars going through let's put the ladder out so i don't have to break my legs trying to jump on and off the trailer so instead of your conventional straps they have these ones like you say they're on the middle run instead and they're a pain in the backside because they get tangled up really easily as well if you're not careful you got to walk down a trailer and then drop them over the pallets onto the outside a little bit like so as you may as well guessed from that previous section of the video we've made the collection tomorrow at 11 a.m is going to be when it's getting delivered and um, probably not by myself so it's going straight back to the yard kept in our secure warehouse for overnight and then delivered nice and securely the next day all right then so i've got a job now down in manchester uh, just by earlham so it's not too bad for me straight down the m6 come off one of the a roads thinking about maybe the a56 off the top of my head and then straight down there towards caddy's head i think it might be in but for now M6 southbound. On this roundabout, just by Leyland, is um, what I call it the Leyland tank. I don't know if the sat navs will be able to pick it up. What? Sorry, sat nav, what am I on about? I was looking at the sat nav. <laughs> I don't know whether the GoPros picked it up or not, just on the left hand side, but it's a big tank with a big sign saying made in Leyland. <laughs> <laughs> on the roundabout if you know what I'm talking about you know what I'm talking about <laughs> oh I had a right brain fog then I was looking at my sat nav I was like I don't know if the sat nav's picking it up well obviously not because the sat nav doesn't record does it <laughs> it's about to get onto the M65 so we can link it up to the M6 south and let's see if there's anybody in the Volsa station Everybody's been a good boy and girls. Now you can't actually see from this side. Oh, yeah, you can. There it is. Got the wrong bit. Oh, we've got an Amazon truck in there. 
got one of them big machinery what does all the road works where it refloors the the way it like digs it up with a conveyor belt it looks like one of them uh, I'm noser <laughs> I like a good noser I always when I drive past them I always try to have a look what type of trucks have been pulled over it's normally flatbeds and foreign drivers to be honest with you but a lot of flatbeds obviously they can see any issues with it the motors can't if even if it's not secured properly etc they can see all that straight away and if it's machinery it needs to be a certain grade of straps to do it uh, i don't think you can use no straps i think it might have to be like chains um yeah i think i think it is chains to be honest or a certain type of different straps i don't know the same never done flatbeds so i can't really comment on the big machinery ones but i wouldn't mind doing it though for a job where you're driving them giant machinery around i think that'd be quite cool wouldn't it a lot of big jcb tractors and diggers and stuff that would be quite cool drive around with them on your back Maybe when I'm self-employed, I might get myself a little flatbed, low loader one. Who knows? Who knows? Watch this space, folks. <laughs> what happens over the next year or two? Who knows? It's all up in the air. That's a nice scan, yeah. And got another one there. A little bit of a change of plan. Instead of going back to the yard and tipping off straight away, I'm changing instead of Manchester as well. So I was originally going to Manchester area, but there's another driver a little bit closer, so it makes more sense for them to get it. I'm going to St. Helens now uh, to collect a couple of pallets on there. I think it's about 10 pallets to be collected. And it's on this south part of St. Helens near the Witness Junction. So I'm going straight down the M6 onto the M62, cut across, and then up to St. Helens to where we need to go. It's near Abbotsfield Road, it's near that area. So if you know St. Helens quite well, you know exactly where I'm going towards. Got some night closures as well on the M6, junction 23 to 22. So luckily, I won't be going near them anyway, next few days. I can appreciate a good advert, I really can, and this one's pretty comical. So it's for Pilkington Glass. We could have made millions of tiny crash helmets, instead we created Pilkington AviSafe. Glass designed to protect birds. <laughs> it just cracks me up, the little bird there with a the crash helmet on. <laughs> oh, simple things in life, you gotta laugh at, haven't you? You go. Two in St. Helens done, got one more to go. Got about six or seven pallet spaces left on my truck. So there's no point going back the yard empty off then sending somebody else there when they're around the corner. Just take the time coming out. I do wish to kept this as a roundabout further ahead. Because <laughs> it used to be a roundabout, but quite busy. And to be fair, it used to be a bit of a pain to try and get out. But however, the way they've made the road now, it is probably worse than the roundabout. It really is. I'll show you that in two seconds. If you're from St. Hillers area, you know what exactly what roundabout I'm on about. Hey. Just up here it is. Fly over them too. It's probably only been finished off for a few months, but 
probably took about a year, but well, it felt like a year anyway. I've been messing about, digging everything up on the road, getting rid of the roundabout, making it like a cross junction with traffic lights. When roadworks were here, oh my God, that was an absolute nightmare to come down this section. So the barriers were too tight together. Temporary barriers with the add up. Um, shout out as well to the driver. Um, I presume it's going to be one of my subscribers. I was driving through Settlers earlier on, and uh, another driver giving a flash, flash the lights, uh, thumbs up, and that. I didn't recognise the company on the driver, so I presume it must be somebody who watches the videos. So shout out, thank you very much for supporting the channel. Appreciate that. So this is the junction I'm talking about. Hey. Now they've made a couple of changes from when it first got built. It used to have barriers going all the way around it. It's like black fencing barriers and they're really, really too close to the edges as you can see uh, where they are now. But it's imagine like black rails all the way around. Looks like on the right hand side, don't know if you can see it, we've well, seen it in a second. It looks like someone's hit one of the lights as well because they have been took they've been tucked down and the pole's been bent a little bit if you come straight out then hard right turn that pole there on the right hand side that's what i was talking about but it looks like they have made a few changes because where them two black poles were they were traffic lights as well and obviously somebody's took them out <laughs> Oh my god, they've spent all this money trying to get that roundabout fixed into a traffic junction and then end up costing more money to fix the mistakes because they planned it wrong. <laughs> Typical waste of council money though, eh? Driving now, and it is currently 20 to 3 at the moment. So I need them on my driver's side, so they're right in front of me. I need to go to the left and then to reverse it back to take up a bit of space in the middle. Should be alright. careful that van that I've seen moving around there's one behind me and there's one about to leave the car park as well make sure they don't park in where I need to go I'll straighten it up tuck it in out of the way I'll move back a little bit in case this van next to him needs to get out. Perfect. Easy as that. One pallet collected through the back doors. Don't have to mess about with the curtains. It's not a big pallet, it's only a little small one, so it's nice and secured in the middle. I'm just got to be careful with these cars, as you can see around here. Uh, the fellow was telling me as well, some of the car drivers, I've been here in the past, it can be a nightmare. He says some of the car drivers just dump them everywhere. <laughs> They're all over the place at the moment. So it doesn't make it easy for us truck drivers when you get into some of the car parks for a delivery or collection. And you can't move around because cars are just dumped everywhere. It really is a headache sometimes. Luckily, it's not always like that. Big speed bumps. Right then, back to the yard I go. And we're back on the road, ladies and gentlemen. Go make a cross over you want. Yep, it is currently quarter past five, and I'm just leaving the yard now to do the trailer swap in St. Ellen's. Got back to the yard. Um, it was a little bit chaotic at the time. <laughs> to wait around about an hour to get it sorted out, and because the trailer was defected, um, I've had to 
wait until there's space to put it onto a certain area of the yard. And yeah, God, well, it wasn't the quickest turnaround, got on a bit. Oh well, it happens, doesn't it? So luckily, St. Louis is only around the corner, the one that we're going to. So it's not exactly I'm driving miles out of the way. It's probably like 15 minutes to get there. Quick 20 minute turnaround, 15, maybe 20 minutes back. So yeah, I should be back anyway by half six latest and finished. It's currently yeah, quarter past five, I said already, yep. Yeah. So yeah, 20 past six, leaving the yard to go home, I reckon. That's my plan. It's the, uh, the plan of action that we're going for. Sounds a good one, doesn't it? Still 12 and a half hours today, which is good, which means tomorrow should be a finish quite early. I say quite early, it's probably going to be about 4 o'clock or something. But still, I won't have mega hours in my bag to do a 12 hour shift, that's for sure. Probably looking at about an 8 hour, 10 hours. So, you know, swings and roundabouts and that. I spoke to Scott in the office already. Um, tomorrow is going to be an eight o'clock start, so at least to get a good lay in. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. Don't have to get up until seven o'clock tomorrow. Leave the yard, leave my house for. Oh, God, I'm going to a balloon. Look, oh, someone's 30 for balloon, he'll cause the crash. <laughs> that balloon just went right underneath my trailer and hit the car <laughs> next to it. <laughs> oh well. Happy 30th to whoever it was. Trailer checks are all completed on this one, and now I need to drop that one where it is, then pick up this one. Connect that pin. Give it a little pull, make sure it's all strengthened and it's not going to come loose. Connect the cables up. As you always say, if it doesn't fit, it doesn't belong. I'm looking at the other one, different type of connection. Bit of a pain if you get a trailer, one of the older ones are a bit stiffer, but this one's been oiled up well. It's up quite Chris. Cheers, Chris. Always make sure that's secure because don't be driving down the road and having that flopping around. And then finally pushing the brake. And away I go. Back to the yard to finish. And just like that, back at the depot. I'm just waiting to get unloaded at the moment. There's one vehicle in front of me to get unloaded. Uh, the time is, I don't even know what time it is at the moment. Quarter past six, that's what time it is. So I should be done and leaving, I'd say seven o'clock be home for 13 hours today. Not bad, I'm waiting around for the next hour. So I'm just gonna do some editing for today's vlog, get that sorted. Might as well make the most of my time that I'm here. Um, and unfortunately, sorry if today's is a little bit late again, cause um, yeah, I was out last night, so I didn't get a good connection to upload it, sorry. <laughs> uh, but anyway, on that note, I'm gonna leave the video here for now. So if you did enjoy it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe as always, and I'll see you again next time. And as always, stay safe out there. If you've got any questions, let me know down below as well, and I'll answer as many as I can. Or I might even include them into one of my videos next time. So again, thank you very much. Take care of yourself. Bye for now. Stay safe.